In this video, I'd like to talk about an old attack, it's actually a fairly old attack, that goes by the somewhat uh, ominous sounding name, Ping of Death. And, and in this attack, uh, what the attacker basically does is he can cause a remote system to crash uh, by sending it just a single malformed internet protocol or IP packet. Now, I do want to emphasize here that, uh, that all the modern operating systems, really anything past uh, around, I would say, 1997, 1998, somewhere in that time frame, uh, is is patched against this particular attack, and so um, you, it's, it's not like it's going to work nowadays. But at the same time, I think uh, you know these types of attacks they are of, of historical interest. Let me kind of phrase that: they are of historical interest. Uh, and I think in general, it's, it's good to kind of understand older attacks, in, in part because you can understand why uh, certain technologies are designed the way they are today. And, and moreover, you don't uh, by understanding the old attacks, you're less likely to, to let's say repeat the mistakes of the past. Okay, so let me kind of dive right in. So in a ping of death, what the attacker is going to do is he's going to create uh, what's called an ICMP echo request. Uh, so ICMP uh, echo request. And uh, this is also known in today's parlance as a ping. And in fact, most people call it a ping. You rarely hear anybody call, call it an ICMP echo request. But I think it's good to kind of understand what the formal terminology is. And, and uh, so normally, uh, you know, ping packets are used for... Um, figuring out whether systems are up and running. It may allow you to determine information about the round trip latency of any communication with that particular system. And it's, it's a good thing to do uh, in general. And typically ping packets are quite small. They, they don't take up a lot, of a lot of size just because they're really there to give you kind of a heartbeat or status about the, the remote system. And, and obviously many remote systems, uh, given the, the kind of ostensibly uh, innocuous nature of pings, uh, most remote systems do respond to ping requests, and they do accept ping packets from, from anybody. They don't really uh, block who, who sends them ping packets. Okay. Now, even though ping packets are small in practice, in theory, uh, they can actually get quite big. And so uh, according to RFC 791, which is the, uh, the RFC that corresponds to the, the IP protocol, you can actually have any IP packet can be up to uh, 65,536 bytes in length. And part of that is, is going to be taken up by a header. Okay, and then you'd also have what are called IP options. And then aside from the header and options, you'll, you'll have your actual data. And that's kind of roughly the format of an IP packet. Okay. Now what the attacker is going to do is he's basically going to craft an IP packet that is bigger than this. He's going to craft an IP packet that is bigger than 65,000 536 bytes. Now you may be asking, well, how can the attacker uh, do this directly given that uh, it violates the IP standard? I mean, wouldn't this somehow just be blocked? Uh, but it turns out that what you can do is you can rely on a technique, and the attackers do this, rely on a technique known as fragmentation. Fragmentation. And what fragmentation basically allows you to do, and actually fragmentation is used uh, in the context of, um, of the physical transport of a packet. So typically when you're transporting uh, Let's say, let's say an IP packet, uh, you may actually have physical limitations when you transport it. And one of those physical limitations is something called uh, the, the path maximum transmission unit or the MTU. Okay, and, and some networks have a, a fixed MTU size. So, for example, if you're transmitting something over the Ethernet, uh, which is typically your, your kind of your local wired network, uh, that would have a path MTU of about 1500 or 1500. So, much smaller than the 65,536 bytes you're allowed to. Uh, with a single IP packet. And in general, uh, most networks uh, will have a, a path MTU that, that's smaller than that allowed, uh, than the maximum allowable uh, by the IP standard. And so, uh, as a result, when you have something that's even bigger than the, than the path MTU, that packet is going to get fragmented. Okay, and when IP packets are fragmented, they're basically broken up into little pieces. Okay, uh, so you get a bunch of little pieces. And each little piece, each little piece will contain, inside of it, it'll contain, uh, in addition to kind of the standard IP information, it'll contain an offset. Okay, and it's going to contain the actual data, the payload itself. And, and the idea is that by looking at the offset, the offset is sort of an index. If you were to reconstruct the original IP packet from the fragments, you can do so by using the offset. Okay? So now let's imagine that this, this this packet has basically been fragmented and it's being transported and now it's, it's arriving at some type of a remote host and let, let's imagine here's a remote, a remote host, there's a computer that is uh, receiving 
this uh, ping request. Okay, and it's this kind of obviously a kind of an old looking computer, and the ping is an old attack, so maybe that's kind of fitting. But imagine the receiving computer is receiving this packet. Uh, the first thing it's going to want to do is it's going to want to reconstruct the original IP packet from all these different fragments. And so you can imagine that uh, it's going to take all the different offsets and figure out what the original packet would look like. And obviously, if this was if this packet was kind of too big in the first place, imagine that 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 this offset here was really big. Imagine this offset was something close to the maximum possible offset, and the data was was uh, quite a lot, or maybe more than than you would normally have been allowed to uh, via just IP. Uh, when you try to reconstruct the packet from the fragments, what you're going to get is you're going to get a much bigger packet than you're allowed. It's actually going to be quite a lot bigger. It's, it's going to be something exceeding 65,536 uh, bytes. Okay, and as a result, uh, uh, what's going to happen next is when when this is actually reconstructed, the system itself is going to run into issues because it was not expecting something this big. Actually, the the real maximum I should be very careful here is actually 65,535. Um, and so it, it's going to be, have expected to see something that's no bigger than 65,535 bytes. When it tries to reconstruct it, uh, it's going to effectively um, overflow uh, various uh, internal memory structures, or typically your memory buffer is going to get overflowed, and that can typically just cause the this, this system to crash completely. Okay, um, and, and as you can imagine, uh, you know that's, that's not a good thing, and it's, it's a very simple attack to carry out, which is what made it very popular. Uh, because it was quite simple to just go ahead and send this single single malformed packet and, and cause the system to crash. Now, obviously, the fix is, as you can imagine, is fairly straightforward. Uh, it's it just what you would basically do is you would add an extra error check inside of uh, during your packet reassembly. And in particular, what you would do is you would you would basically take a look at the offset itself, and you would take a take a look at the length of the actual data. Okay, and you would basically try to ensure that the offset plus the length of the actual data that's provided in that fragment would be less than or equal to 65,535. And if, if it's not, then you know that the packet is too big. And if you're checking for this, then you won't end up, uh, I guess, assembling or reassembling a packet that is, uh, that is too big for, for what you're allowed. And I also want to make one last point before I end this video, which is that even though this is called a ping of death, even though it's about ICMP, really at its core, the problem here is not something that's, let's say, isolated to ICMP. This is just fundamentally, was fundamentally taking advantage of uh, packet reassembly issues. In, in reality, if, if packet reassembly was done uh, in a more intelligent way or done with extra error checks in place, then you would never have had this attack. It wasn't something that was maybe specific to ping. It just was, was more of a general packet reassembly issue. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. This is a historic attack, and I think that uh, nowadays, um, there, there are certainly many security technologies that detect it. Uh, operating systems no longer allow it. Uh, but I think it helps to understand why security technologies evolved the way they did and, and why um, operating systems evolved the way they did. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to making some more. Thanks a lot.